There were over 700 submissions for our July composing competition, but only 15 went on to become finalists. So what could those 700 other people have done differently? What is the first thing they need to focus on to stand out? And how can they and you have a better shot at becoming a finalist next time? I know that a lot of people who weren't finalists want feedback on their music, but to do that 700 times is unfortunately impossible. So today I'm going to listen to four tracks from composers who volunteered for public critique and share my thoughts on what they need to work on. Hopefully, even if yours isn't one of the tracks, you'll still get some tips and perspective that you can apply to your own music. And thank you to our brave volunteers. Let's get started. All right, so first up, I've got Cloud Peak Village, Ciara's Journey from Paul Devaney. All right, so a few things already. I think the choice of using winds, which is something I mentioned in the live stream, I really like. I think woodwinds really fit well with the image that we were using for this. Um, the little sheep sound, I found a bunch of people did those and it was kind of cute, but generally kind of distracting, I think. I don't think any of those kind of sound effects, the farms and the sheeps and the wind and all that kind of stuff really helped elevate the music all that much. Um, they're okay, but I don't know, like in the last competition, there was a lot of water sound effects and there was only one that it really stood out using the water as percussion, but just kind of creating the ambience, I don't really think helped too much. And then the other thing is I already felt like, you're kind of getting, uh, I don't know, that the percussion, feels kind of far away and then the winds feel a little let me back up a little bit on that thought the balance feels a little off just kind of overall with where things are in the orchestra that oboe is very present the violins are almost hard to hear. Like I can tell that they're doing stuff, but like not as much as they would be if there were real 12 or more players really sitting there. I think we'd be hearing that line a lot clearer. Uh, and the percussion, the percussion instruments kind of feel like they're in the wrong place a little bit, honestly. a little hard to articulate but I'm not a hundred percent clear on the direction this track is going necessarily or even kind of the texture like I guess if that's the main theme the oboe I think everybody else around it might be a little too busy they're not really adding texture and support there's just all these kind of things pulling me off in different directions now if that's the goal you're trying to create this kind of hubbub of a village marketplace or something, then I think you need to go even harder into that idea. Don't let the oboe be the main thing. The oboe does something and the flute does something and the strings do something. Maybe that to kind of be pulling our attention in all these different ways. Where it's at right now, I'm just a little distracted of like, should I be listening to those strings? It's like, it's like all the different parts are a little too interesting, ironically. Um, that if they simple down to be a little more scalar or just, you know, arpeggios, if they could become slightly more background and let the oboe be the feature, that might be a little more clear. Or the other way around is like, don't let that oboe be the feature. So let everybody be kind of like in the mix of it. That would work too. I'm kind of stuck in the middle between those ideas where this is at right now. And also I just, I mean, you can kind of see, I hate to judge, judge music by the waveform, but you can kind of see like, well, where are we going? Why does this just kind of stop? So right there, we get that nice satisfying return to one, but don't bump bump 37 seconds in. So is the piece over? Like, why do we, why do we end there? I think it would be a lot stronger if there was some suspense. If you're going to stop and pause, then you want that pause to be me being like, what's going to happen? 
where's you know at least like where's my one chord where's my suspense what where's the tension and i didn't get any tension the piece just kind of ended i like again i could cut this right there and we're all satisfied we're like okay cool that was the end so you know be careful about doing that there, there's going to be that one guy in the audience that starts to clap because he thinks the piece is over it's never that guy's fault it's the composer who made them think the piece was done and so you know, be careful about doing that. So the waltz here is not necessarily a bad idea, but it it's not the same piece. This is a different piece of music. And so, you know, some of the strengths of the finalists were going through a lot of different feelings and emotions, but within the same world, you know, that there was, it would get bigger and it could be epic or it could be intimate, but it still belonged to a certain thing. I say a lot that I used to think I had to write like the entire biography of Napoleon in a piece and cover all the, you know, the love and the enemies and whatever. And really, I think a piece of music is better captured as like a postcard. And especially consider we have one image. So we're trying to capture one experience from this image. Is it the village? Is it the rider? Is it the clouds? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But like, let's capture a single story in our 90 seconds, which is really not that long. And then, you know, you can have some dynamics and depth within that story. But just changing character completely is a little confusing it's like again you know this this just ended now we have just a standalone piece everything feels very far away too which may just be everything's a little too washed in reverb that it's not as present as it could be You need to be really careful with your samples there. The start times, you know, a lot of sample libraries will actually, the start of the sample is right into when the instrument actually starts to speak. There's a little bit of time. And so we're ending up with a bit of kind of mushiness where we're not getting a nice crisp clear on the beat that a real player would be able to accomplish. So you need to compensate for that by kind of delaying or, you know, if you quantize, then you need to shift everything earlier. Just you need to be careful about that because where it is right now, it's it's not clear that, you know, the different parts with having off the rhythm start times is just kind of a little muddy. Um, the other thing is you, you did have this kind of little bit of suspense here that held us. So that's the kind of suspense we're talking about to have over over here in the beginning of this. Uh, I would say overall, the, the biggest things are there's a bit of a lack of clarity in the parts. Uh, it's a little too distant sounding. Also, I think there's a little lack of clarity in the intention of the piece. Which way do you want this to go? I think you had two different entries here and you need to pick one of them. Um, then the other one is, again, not to judge things by the waveform, but it is interesting. If you look at all the other ones, they have a lot more uh, just gain on them, which is not necessarily affecting the quality of the submission but when it's being played back everything you know i think you should normalize your track so that at least when we play it back it's at a nice solid volume in the context of everything else we're listening to all right thank you paul for submitting your track next we have ds Cero from tm factory <laughs> all right so i'm going to stop already the problem with that cello is that it sounds like a completely fake cello. It just doesn't convince me at all. Part of what is not convincing is there's this kind of harsh, nasally kind of tone to it. The other thing is how static and repetitive those tones sound. It's like a machine gun and, and it feels artificial. So two things you can do. If that's your best sample, that's the best you're going to get, um, then you should try to EQ out some of that sound. Let's see if we can find where that is. So these are different samples, but let's say around, around here is where we're getting kind of some of that bite. 
So that might be something we want to EQ out a little bit. If, now these samples I don't think are a problem on that, but if your sample is a little too cutting through right there, we maybe need to pull that back. Yeah, it's a little too sharp and kind of right there. Um, it's almost the opposite of the other track. Now it's a little too present. And then that repetitive thing, what you need to do is really play with your dynamics. I think with sampled instruments, you really need to overdo the dynamic variety. For example, when I'm doing a long note, I will ride it from bottom to top. which feels like too much. You think you just want a little variety within a dynamic range, but you really need to over-exaggerate that because the fact that your instrument is dead is a non-living, non-breathing thing is why it sounds artificial. You need to breathe life into it. And dynamics is a huge way to be able to do that. So if you could vary the velocities a little bit, you know, accent the first one, bump, 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 bump. That'd be one way. It would break it up, but also just humanize it a little bit to have a little more variety there will really help. So there's a bunch of things to say. I mean, a lot of this I think is around kind of the production and this, the choice of sample libraries. Check out Spitfire has a new free library out with some good samples. Uh, I think you need some better sample libraries. There was a very clear opportunity here. We had a new section start. Would have loved for a new instrument to take over the lead to give us some development and give us some forward motion. And, and you know, like we've entered into a new section by having that same violin line Unfortunately, it's just kind of more of the same here. Overall, the the um, mix is a bit harsh. I really want. I would, I would definitely do something. It's the, the overall mix is a bit harsh. It's a little like here. So you definitely want to work on uh, the mastering. getting uh necessarily a crystal clear direction from the melody we're kind of like going up and down and up and down and up and down it would be nice if maybe we were kind of building to you know like a more clear arc to it might give it a, a little more sense of journey and let me kind of follow where it's going because sometimes when you hit a cadence i'm like oh that's where a cadence is i wasn't necessarily driven or guided to that moment. Um, so it, I think the I think you might want to look at kind of the underlying skeleton behind your melody too and find, you know, how are you guiding us? What's the cantus firmus underneath it? And is it, if, you know, if we reduced your melody down to whole notes, would we still get kind of a satisfying shape? <laughs> All 
I mean, something I think is really strong is the overall arc of the piece that you have this kind of lower introduction and then you get bigger and we do build to our biggest point and we have Okoda. I think all of that, as far as the kind of form of the 90 seconds is strong. Uh, I would also work more. So the main thing I guess to work on would be the production, but then I would also work more on that, making that idea. I think that your main idea could be a little stronger too, actually. That's actually pretty good. It's the it's the parts where you just kind of go into the quarters that we lose it. So that pull some pieces. Your your basic idea, I think, actually has a lot to work with in there, but you're not working with it. So I want to hear more of that. I want to hear that motive. Those those are really good pieces. You, you really need to exploit those and make more of those because with this part. Bang, 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 just doesn't have the same. Doesn't have the same energy. You're, you're demanding that these violins are the main thing that I'm listening to, but they're not necessarily doing as much. Like you've got a lot of background parts that are kind of doing some interesting things, but but those are background parts. Like your main thing also needs to be interesting as well. Uh, so I would work on that as well. Hopefully that's helpful. Let's go to the next one. Next we have Green World from Nicola Berti. So I'm having a similar issue that I had before about kind of telling where where we're going. The the production is is better. The sample is being used and the reverb and stuff is better. We have just these kind of ideas chained together that we could kind of shuffle around. Would it really change much? Like why do these big Why do we have those drums here? And then they stop because this doesn't necessarily sound like a new section. So it's like, where did our drums go? And so we're not necessarily using the orchestration to help us understand the form. The drums feel a little random there. The fact that they, they stopped and went away. I mean, if you want to be using the drums, you want to be emphasizing like the second half is bigger or we're hitting a big new beginning. They're just kind of in the middle and then they leave. So I'm not quite sure about that. And then let's start here. That was also a little bit of a false start. I thought we were starting here with the winds, that the winds were gonna be like da, da, da. But then it wasn't, it was, it was the strings that came in. So I would be careful of the introduction, making sure it's a very clear intro and maybe doing something to separate those moments so, it, so there's not quite any confusion about when are we actually starting. So, that's, that's a really strong opening phrase. I might want to come back to that first thing, maybe do like a period form and let us hear that and get that. You know, come back to that basic idea and lead us to a, a different conclusion might help me kind of feel the form and kind of follow the line a little better. Like here. I don't feel like everything has to be the sentence form and the period form. Like, I know I talk about those forms a lot and it's not because those are rules that you have to use, but what is so fantastic and amazing about them is that they really give you a strong guideline for shape and for kind of giving us beginning, middle and end within a short 
amount of time within eight bars or 16 or however much you want to use, even six, you can shorten it down, but we still get beginning, middle and end. And I'm missing beginning, middle and end. So not only do you want beginning and middle and end for your whole piece, which, you know, we saw here, that intro, main body, conclusion, you want beginning, middle and end there. And then the beginning needs a beginning, middle and end. And then the beginning of that and however, you know, it depends on the length of your piece, but that beginning, middle and end cycle has to keep repeating. And right now I'm kind of losing like, wh which one am I in? Am I in a beginning, a middle and end? And I'm never quite sure. Cause that all of a sudden feels like a new beginning, but I never got the ending. But is this a new beginning? I guess it's a middle. That's a middle. This is a new beginning. I think it's mostly you're not having endings. That you are kind of having maybe beginning, middle, beginning, middle, beginning, middle, without necessarily closing your other ideas. And you can overlap the end of one and the beginning of another. But if you're going to do that, it should be clear and your the previous one should be really calling for a specific place to land so i know whether or not you did or did not land there uh you don't have to you know you can have the five chord go somewhere other than one you don't have to set up an expectation and just deliver the cliche but you should set up an expectation so then i know whether or not like okay yeah we went there this time cool or oh we went somewhere different cool but um you know those middles aren't quite giving me an expectation to get so again i'm just kind of taken from middle to middle oh new beginning okay oh new middle um, without quite ever feeling the punctuation of the piece it's kind of like writing without any paragraph breaks or kind of moments that separate the, the thoughts so i can't quite figure out where within the essay we are necessarily if we need those endings and we need those kind of clear moments of like that, what you just heard is over. This new thing is coming, which again, they can overlap, but if they do, we still should be able to draw that line and find that moment. You know, like there's a cool moment there. We get that the drum, things get a little darker. It would be cool if we were set up to not expect that. We're kind of not expecting anything necessarily. So if you had made me, set up to really expect like a one major chord and then we didn't get it that would be even darker you know you emphasize the moment by having it be something other than what i thought was coming so if i expected a major chord and you gave me a minor chord that minor is going to be more poignant and have more power because it was unexpected again if i'm if i'm not necessarily expecting anything then you could throw anything at me and i'm like okay Again, we're, we're kind of getting a constant feed of new information. That was a convincing, that was a more convincing build. Like we actually kind of went somewhere and then we had a hit that was good. Because a lot of times I'm just getting kind of new stuff. But there I was ready for new stuff. Stuff. Where do these bells come from? Also, I, at the last second, I took a glance at the waveform because I was like, are we really coming to the end here? Because I think you've started to set up like we're bringing in horns, we're bringing in these new percussion colors. Things are getting bigger, um, but the writing didn't actually get any bigger. It kind of hit like, okay. Here we go. Like this is kind of our ending section. So I think you could have gone much bigger on reaching some sort of climax and a peak. So overall, I guess my advice would be to pay attention to the sense of beginning, middle and end on all scales, reaching peaks, reaching climaxes. And when new ideas come in, having a real reason for that new idea to be coming in, like why did the, why did the glockenspiel or whatever it was come in there? Um, why did the, drum happen over here on this beat and go away. Those, those kind of moments uh, to really think about why. All right. Thank you, Nicola. Let's go to the next one.
Okay, the next one we have is Wind Riders Village from Juan Vivas. And I looked, I, I noticed this one is longer than all the others, and I was worried, did this go over time? Um, it did not. It just barely made it, which is good, which is good. All right, so let's check it out. So I'm going to pause already. And this is again back to that point about samples, artificial samples, you need to artificially force to breathe. So I think that the, I think is what a, a bassoon, we could probably get a little more out of it if it really was like, let me pull up a bassoon here. So here how kind of static that is, I think it would be stronger if we could get life and, and breath in it so that there's some movement and so we aren't so clearly tipped off right away like oh that's not a real bassoon there may be some but more Also, something that can make your introduction and your beginning of your A theme a lot stronger is to not just have them be copy pasted the exact same thing. So if your bassoon went out, that would actually give us a nice little contrast that like, okay, this flute is now the main sound, that's where I'm taking. And there's some difference that the introduction had that bassoon part to give it a little emphasis of its own thing. And then now we're kind of off into a new space rather than just kind of stacking up the layers, which is kind of where it feels like if you just kind of go back to bar one and put something else on top of it. Also, sorry to keep pausing there, but also another handy trick when you're starting a new section, if you're going to bring in something new is actually to bring in more than one thing that's new, maybe two things. So, you know, having the, the bassoon disappear might actually kind of count as something new. So more than just one change will give more significance to a section break. But also I'm thinking those, nah, we, we, we kind of can't really change much with those colors, but you know, maybe let's think for a second. Yeah, dro dropping the bassoon is probably enough, I think. I don't think the counterline is too crystal clear. It's very, it's, it's similar in tone to what's already our brand new instrument. And the brand new instrument feels pretty present and they seem kind of like off somewhere else in the room. Um, I'm not quite sure if that, that counterline is working. Especially because the, the melody is still going uh, and that counterline is rather rhythmic. So they're, they're kind of sitting on, they're, they're, they're distracting from each other a little bit. I don't think the counterline is, is supporting at the end there as much as like taking my attention away, but the melody wasn't done talking. So, you know, make sure your counterline is supporting what the melody is already doing or filling in the gaps, but not necessarily kind of talking over what the melody is doing, which is a little bit of what I get right there. It would be fine if your melody just held, da, 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 held that out, let the counterline do its thing, fine. But right now it's kind of like two people talking at once. So I'm, I'm feeling um, loopiness a little bit that, that we're kind of just kind of looping what's going on, especially the way you had the first time you had your flute kind of da, 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 and then you did that again. I don't think it was necessary to do that again because th that time, let's find it. 
that's being like da, 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 lead us back into the middle but now let that whole section from here to here or let that thing then end so this time through let that breathe da, 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 da. breath maybe a counter line or something but your main line could could breathe changing color. I think the transition here needs to be a little cleaner. Things are getting very different, but they're slightly just kind of merging together. I mean, you can kind of see this almost in your line that the whole thing is a bit of like a diagonal, which I think is the right idea in a lot of ways, but we get again on that idea of like two or three new things happening at once will give us a little more crystal clear cut of where we are. I didn't quite hear the other section end before we were off into this new thing is the, is the problem. That, that's the problem is is we're kind of like mooshing together. The ending didn't quite end or breathe enough for the new thing to have just kind of already been going on, I think. So I would um, pull back your snare. I think you, I mean, unfortunately, this is this is the thing everybody doesn't want to hear. You need better brass samples for sure. Um, and just kind of where everything is placed has gotten all kind of like tinny and, and narrow, um, unfortunately. <laughs> I like that you brought in new material for the end there to give it like extra celebration and stuff. I thought that was good with like some of the new percussion elements and ideas. Um, there is, I and mean, this is a bit of an overriding theme, there is a bit of a sameness across, if we'll call this eight bar unit, a bit of a sameness in energy and intensity. It'd be nice if, again, on, on our smaller section levels, we had some rises and falls, we had some sort of peak. Um, cause right now it's just kind of like, the energy level, once it reaches this moment here at like 113, 115, then it's the same. And I think we need to like keep driving us, keep building us towards a big conclusion would be really nice. So last thing I want to do actually is bring up Jacob's track and maybe talk through a few points on it. Now, obviously the real fiddle is huge. It does so much to help us. And, you know, a lot of us aren't in a position for that to help, but there is still a lot of clarity in what the basic idea is and that this section has ended. There's that break, which lets us breathe before new things come in, which is really important. You know, the beginning of this main section is more satisfying because of that pause and that breath. The little bell is a nice little filler color, but really that pause then makes it, it clears the room. It kind of opens the curtain and clears the space so that can come in. I 
want to emphasize here how much clarity there is in what's going on. There's that main recorder line, and then everything else is supporting it. Everything else is going, bum, ba -ba -da, ba -bum, ba -ba -da. you know, everything is just hitting that rhythm and saying like, yeah, hey, everybody in the room, this is what we're doing right now. We're going, bum, ba -ba -da, ba -bum, ba -bum. and there's just so much, you know, kind of like focus on what's going on. Again, that the main line is being supported by everything else, and there's nothing like distracting from it. Or, or kind of like getting in its way, it, you know, that main recorder is the star of the show and everybody else is helping it do its thing. Again, the main new things, the higher octave, the violins, again, are just emphasizing the main line and supporting it. Uh, you know, I say that line support a lot and that's what's going on here with a lot of these parts. So here we've kind of blended ending and beginning a little bit, but it works because of that rise. So we get a real transition. We get that this section by rising up to a high peak is choosing to go somewhere. And so when it lands on that high peak, da -da 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 -da, that we already know just from the nature of a rising line that's going to hit its destination, that that destination is gonna be a significant punctuation point. So it's okay to start something new there because of that. If we don't have that clarity in the rise, it won't be as satisfying. So that rising line is actually really important to make that transition work. Again, remember that thing about a few different things have changed. So the fiddle has come in. There's also some percussion changes. There's the recorders are gone, so there's a really clear color difference between what's going on in this section right here and what's going on in the section right after it. right there for a second uh notice that feeling of suspense that we're going down to kind of a low point but there's still some need for things to go on we know that the piece isn't over yet um what else did i want to emphasize i guess just the feeling the edges of the section is not something you need to be afraid of Yeah, it, there's there's surprising simplicity and focus. You know, it's really about that main line and everything else is there to support that main line. So, you know, that's another point that you wanna make sure your main line is clear and strong and you know what it is so that if it had to stand up on its own, it could because everybody else is, is really there to help it do that. <laughs> extra emphasis on the end there. You know, we didn't get really big until the final moment. And then there was that repetition kind of sticking us on that one point, which built up some tension and some suspense, like waiting for it to get where it's going. Just repeating that same thing four times builds up some anticipation that's like, okay, you know, where are we going? When are we going to get onto something? Um, so, you know, listening back to this, I haven't listened back to this since the live stream and what's really standing out to me is the simplicity which is in a good way in a strong way the simplicity that we were able to just kind of get our minds around it and capture it everything is crystal clear everything is really supporting that main line that's the main thing that's going on if you want to hear what some of the most incredible an amazing submission sounded like, make sure you check out the recording of the live stream event. And get your pencils sharpened and your templates set up because we'll be announcing the next competition on September 28th.
Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.